as we gather today, move among us and make us to be the people that you've called us to be. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we continue now, we're going to join in our prayer of confession. I'm going to ask that we stand as we sing the prayer of confession and then the uh, musical response and our first hymn. So let us stand together in confession before our Lord. Join with me. Merciful God, the gift of Jesus' life in us is visible in the way we witness the fruitfulness of that gift. We know that the fruit of the Spirit consists of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yet so often we put conditions on our love, and joy and peace are difficult to discern when our words and actions deny their presence. Let's join together now in singing, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Father, we thank you so much that you are that sweet spirit that's upon us and in us and through us. We lay this before you now and ask that you would move within our midst as we share together in this time. Through Christ we pray, amen. Shannon, would you come and read for us? Shannon has done such a good job of providing leadership and scripture reading over these last months. I wanted her once again to lead us in this time. Though I'm going to confess, she did not know we were live today. And so she's nervous. Let me get you a microphone. It is now the Lord was on me and he brought me out of by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley it was full of bones he led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley bones that were very dry he asked me son of man can these bones live I said servant Lord you alone know then he said to me prophecy to these bones and say them dry bones hear the word of the Lord this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones I will make breath enter you and you will come to life i will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin i will put breath in you and you will come to life then you will know that i am the lord so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i was prophesying there was a noise a rattling sound and the bones came together bone to bone i looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them then he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the servant Lord says, come breath from the four winds, breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them 
They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophecy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. I have done it, declares the Lord. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. I have done it, declares the Lord. As I was talking to Shannon about this reading, I said, do you want the spooky reading or the hard reading? And she said, spooky? And then she read it and she said, spooky? I said, yeah, a valley of bones that suddenly start rattling and coming together and getting flesh without skin and then skin. And then you have a valley of dead bodies. A little bit spooky. But it's a promise that God will bring life where there is death and where there is no sign of life at all. Our children's sermon today is from Raylan, and so I invite you to join in that. In weeks to come, we're going to be loosening up some of these things, and your masks will be able to come off as we get closer and closer to that 70% vaccination. Children will be able to join us up front, but for now we continue with this. Hi everyone, it's Raylan. Look what I have. I have macaroni. I love macaroni, don't you? Well, this doesn't look quite like the macaroni that my mom makes. I wonder if it tastes good. Mmm, it seems to be missing something. What do you think it needs? Well, for one thing, I'll tell you, this macaroni hasn't been cooked. So first, we need to put in some water and boil it on top of the stove till it's soft and tender. Next, we would drain the water off and add a little milk and some cheese and stir it all together. And then it goes in the oven. And we would bake it for about 20 minutes. And that would make this dry, tasteless macaroni really come to life. This dry macaroni actually reminds me of a story in the Bible. It's the story of the prophet Ezekiel. God took Ezekiel and showed him a valley that was filled with dry bones scattered all over. And God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live again? Well, Ezekiel didn't really know how to answer. He just said, Lord, only you know the answer to that. Then God told Ezekiel, Speak to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Look, I am going to put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. So Ezekiel spoke the message just as God told him. As he spoke, there was a rattling noise across the valley and the bones came together into complete skeletons. And then muscles and flesh formed over the bones and skin covered their bodies. And finally, the winds came and filled the bodies with breath and they came alive. So look at this macaroni again. It is dry and hard and it's not very good at all. It looks like nothing can help it. Nothing good can come of it. But we know better, don't we? We know that if we boil it for 10 minutes and add some milk and cheese, will have something that's really good. That's the way it feels. When facing something that's very difficult in our lives, it's hard to think that anything good can happen. It seems like everything is just a valley of dry bones. But just as we know this macaroni can become very tasty, we know that the hard parts of our life can turn around for the better. Just as God brought life to the valley of dry bones with the breath of his Holy Spirit, God can make something good from the bad times in our life. 
Thank you. Thank you, Raylan. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We need you, Lord, in our lives each day because we are lost without you. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. You may, as, as we continue, this is a passage that we know well. This was the one that Shannon was offered and decided she didn't want to do. So, let us hear for the word of the Lord from Luke's letter to the gospel of the Holy Spirit, which is the book of Acts, chapter 2. We read, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews of every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? So how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Somehow we made fun of them and they said they've just had too much wine. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd saying, fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. This is God's word for God's people. Together we bless his name. This morning, today, is Pentecost. A day of fire and wind. Did you know that Pentecost is the only holiday named in the New Testament? We've got a lot of holidays that we celebrate as followers of Jesus, but Pentecost is the only one that's named. Christmas is a lovely day filled with joy and gladness, a day to celebrate with family and to worship the babe in the manger. Easter is a day of hope and new life, a day for Christians to celebrate Christ's victory over death, and we need to do that. But these are days that believers can celebrate among themselves. We, we can celebrate them as followers of Jesus alone. They mark the entry of, God's, of God into the world and God's victory over death and the grave. But Pentecost, a day that few of us often think about, is a totally different kind of day. We can not celebrate Pentecost in isolation, and just among other believers. 
We can't celebrate by simply being happy because Pentecost sends us into the world. After the Spirit fell on the disciples in the upper room, suddenly they're no longer in that room. <laughs> they were among the people from across the empire, from the entire world as Luke describes it. Everything that was known, they'd all come to Jerusalem for one reason or another. And Luke says the disciples were among them and sharing the good news of Jesus in a way that they would understand. Pentecost is a day to get out of the building and into the world. It's a breath of fresh air. Throughout the scriptures, the breath or the wind of God has brought salvation and life. In Genesis 1 and verse 2, we read that the Spirit of God or the wind of God brooded over the surface of the waters. The Hebrew word is the word ruach. We're going to use that a number of times today. Can you say it with me? Ruach. That means spirit. It means wind. It means breath. The ruach of God moved over the surface of the waters and triggered creation. In Exodus 14, the wind of God blew once again. The children of Israel had left Egypt. The Exodus was just beginning when the Egyptians decided they wanted them back. And so as they were leaving, they were pushed further into the wilderness, and suddenly they find themselves with Egyptians on one side and water on the other. And once again, the Ruach of God moved and blew, and the sea parted, and the children of Israel crossed on dry land. The Ruach of God. The breath of God, my friends, brings salvation. And the breath of God is creative, but it also refreshes. In 1 Kings 19, the prophet Elijah has had a great victory over all of the prophets of Baal. He's feeling really good about that until he hears that Queen Jezebel has decided that she's going to put him to death by that time the next day. And Elijah goes into a tailspin, and he wanders out into the wilderness, and he lays down, and he says, God, just kill me. But a messenger of God, or an angel of God, came and provided him with food and water and rest. And in the power of that rest and water, he traveled 40 days to the mountain of God. And once again, he climbs the mountain of God, and he's waiting there in a cave, and he says, God, just kill me. And then he hears the voice of God, not in fire, not in earthquake, not in windstorm, but with a gentle breeze. The breath of God, gently comforting and strengthening Elijah. Hmm. The refreshing breath of God. From the beginning, the Spirit of God moved across the people and changed them. In the vision of Ezekiel that Shannon read for us earlier, the valley of dry bones was a place of death. But when the breath of God blew over them, life was restored. And so, when we come to Pentecost... And we hear about the wind that blew through that room. We know that the creative, the saving, the refreshing and the life-giving power of the Spirit has fallen upon those disciples. For 50 days after the resurrection, they had been waiting. 
They'd been waiting in Jerusalem in the upper room. They'd been hiding from Roman authorities. They'd been hiding from Jewish authorities. For 50 days, they'd experienced occasional visits from the resurrected Christ. They had seen Jesus ascend to the Father, and for 10 days it had been quiet. They'd heard his commission. They'd prayed for guidance. They had replaced Judas. But they were still gathered and hiding in that upper room. And then the Ruach, or the Numa of God, blew into their lives. The room shook, the flames shell, fell. The Numa, the breath of God that had initiated creation and parted the waters and whispered comfort to Elijah and animated Ezekiel's army, blew upon those that were gathered. It settled into the lives of the followers of Jesus and changed them completely. Suddenly, rather than being in that upper room, they were among the people. We don't even read about them leaving the space. But when the spirit fell upon them, the building, you ready, could no longer hold them. The building could not hold them. And so they were out in the crowd sharing the good news of Jesus and calling people to new life. These men and women who'd been behind closed doors had left the building when the Spirit fell. They could no longer sit still. Folks, for the past year, the Spirit has been driving us out of the building and into the community. Some of us have heard the voice of the Spirit. Some of us have been confused by the movement of the Spirit. Some of us have thought that without the building, we are not the church. But the Spirit of God has shown us something else. Oh my, it is beautiful to be back in this space, isn't it? It's beautiful to be able to see one another, to look at you and to look into your eyes and to know that you're here with us. It's a wonderful thing. But let us not forget the lesson of this year. You and you and you and you and you and you and I are the church. Whether we are here or not, we are the living stones that build the church. And the mortar that holds us together is the Holy Spirit. <sighs> we need a fresh blowing of the Spirit. We need the Spirit to move through us and revive us. For without the work of the wind of God, the Holy Spirit of God, we are as useless as Ezekiel's army. That valley of bones looked very different after Ezekiel preached. And I'll tell you what, every time I read that passage in the translation that says the, that the Lord told Ezekiel to preach to the bones, I have a feeling of unity <laughs> with Ezekiel. Because sometimes it feels like we're preaching to bones. But the Spirit of God takes those words and gives life and hope. And as he preached, those bones were changed. They were reassembled. The flesh and muscle had reformed. The skin had covered the body. They looked amazing. But in reality, despite all appearances, it was still an army of dead people. They looked like they were, they were something, but they were dead. Only when the Ruach blew over them 
and into them did they come to life. Today we're regathering, we're bringing back together the pieces of our lives and relationships. They were being reassembled. And it's amazing. Folks simply coming together and dressing up is not what makes us God's powerful people. Today we need to open our lives to the wind of God, to the blowing of the Spirit. As Peter preached that day, he quoted the prophet Joel. And he said, in these last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, on your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. There are two things to note in these words. First, there's a reversal that Peter talks about here. I don't know if you caught it or not. Young people are normally the dreamers, aren't they? With these wild dreams. These imaginations that run off with them. And those who've been seasoned by time grow a wisdom that turns into vision. Those who are older have vision and are able to see it through. But when the Spirit is poured out on all God's people, it's the old men who become dreamers. You catch that? That giddiness of youth that says, this is what's possible. Strikes those who have had the eight years. And the wisdom of years fills those who are yet young and they see vision of what God can and will do as we pursue that vision. This is the work of the Spirit. And second, notice that no one is excluded from the Spirit's work. Sons and daughters, younger and older, men who are servants and women who are servants as well, all can declare God's word. Shannon can read, Maggie can pray, Marilyn can inspire, <laughs> Beverly and Bob can fall in love. All of these things are the work of the Spirit. Even during a time of pandemic. And you know what? The work of the Spirit is never predictable. Do you hate surprises? You need to work on it. Because the Spirit of God is going to surprise us. And it's never predictable. Oh, friends, I want the doors of the church to open. If you are inside, as the doors of the church open, it's time to take the message of the power of the Holy Spirit outside. And as the doors of the church open, if you're outside the body of Christ, it's time to come inside. If the Holy Spirit's power is unknown to you, it's time to come inside and be renewed by the breath of the Holy Spirit, which may blow gently or may blow so hard that the waters are parted or may simply brood over your life and create something new. That's the work of the Spirit. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Let us pray together. Oh, breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure. 
until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I'm wholly thine, until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. God, breathe on us, renew us, and restore us by your Spirit. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. Ah, yes, there are so many reasons to bless the Lord. And please be seated. It's such a privilege to be able to pray with and for one another. I want to share with you a couple of things that are words of praise and of intercession. Our friend Nina is on the way home from the hospital today. Nina's had a rough week, a couple of surgeries, a lot of blood, but she's heading home today, and so we thank God for that. We also thank God that we're able to gather here today. Yeah. We thank God that just a few months ago, there were some of us on the restart team or reopening team and task force who thought we would never see the numbers that we'd set forward. We said we want to try to get to 3% PCR before we reopen. Do you know what the number was on Friday? 3%. <laughs> Our God is with us, and our God's doing things that we can't imagine. I encourage you, if you have not, get your vaccination, because the quicker we all do that, the quicker my forehead will not be so terribly itchy, and the rest of you will be able to breathe freely. It's good to be able to gather, and as we go to the Lord in prayer, we remember the land of India, we remember Brazil. We remember our own nation. We thank God for the physicians and the nurses and the researchers who've worked so hard. And we thank God that he has been with us through this entire time, every step of the way. And I'm going to be eager to hear in the weeks to come how you have experienced God's presence during this year. So be thinking about it now, because you're going to have an opportunity to share that in the future. We also want to remember in prayer today those who are grieving, who through this year have lost loved ones and not been able to really memorialize and remember those folks. We're going to share some names next week on Memorial Day weekend that will give us an opportunity to remember and to thank God for the lives of those. So I'm going to ask we go to the Lord together in prayer now, and in the silent moments, you bring the concerns that are on your hearts as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today we come grateful for what you're doing in our midst. Thank you that we can find in you all that we need. We thank you that we've been able to gather together again. Lord, may this be a time as we long remember when your Holy Spirit moved in our midst, revived us, brought life, brought comfort, brought creativity, and brought new beginnings. We thank you for the healing that you brought to the bodies and lives of so many, and we also pray that you would bring comfort to the thousands who have lost people they love. We pray for the lands where this virus is continuing to expand, in India, in Brazil, Korea and Japan, so many places that continue to be struggling, we thank you that we're seeing a decline here. 
Oh, God, give us hearts of love for our sisters and brothers around the world who are in need of our help now. Thank you for all those who have faithfully served over this year, risking their own lives in order to bring relief to others. And now, Lord, we bring to you those concerns that are most upon each of our hearts. Lord, these things we bring before you knowing that you hear us and that you will answer and receive us. It is in your hands that we commit ourselves. Because, Lord, we know that's where we're safe. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And now as we close... Mark's going to play for us as we meditate upon what God's doing. If you wish a time of prayer or to experience God's refreshing, you're welcome to come here to the front to pray or right where you are as Mark plays. Spirit. May God's Spirit rest upon you and drive you out of the building into the world through His power. 
share the good news that Jesus lives and that all things are new. No matter how dead you feel, God can breathe new life into you. May you experience that today. Now go in God's blessing. Amen.